Aloha, welcome to this introduction to Goddess Flow Healing Movement. So in this class, we are going to cover the basics of Goddess Flow practices. Uh, we'll be focusing on the hips, the shoulders, and we'll go a little bit into posture. So one of the main things we want to focus on when learning to come back into our body in a joyful, pleasureful way is to notice how it feels to stand in different ways with our body and how to move in different ways. So normally when we are taught about posture, it is, you know, kind of that military stance, like stand up straight, shoulders back, right? Be strong. Um, but that doesn't tend to work very well for feminine bodies, um, whether male or female. Typically, you know, females, female bodies tend to be more feminine. Um, so if, you know, standing in that militaristic shoulders back stance feels good for you, then go for it. But more often than not, if you have um, a softer body or, um, or are a female, you are going to want to learn to soften into your posture more than hold it rigid. Uh, and one of the things, just on a side note, that will help support that is working on your core energy. So when we're sick and, you know, kind of as we age, our core energy tends to decline. And a big part of our core energy comes from um, our pelvis. It comes from our adrenals, um, which are on the top of our kidneys. And so this lower portion of our body, our hip, butt, uh, low belly area is very important to not only our posture, but also our ability to function and our ability to have a radiant, uplifting energy that naturally lifts us up into a beautiful posture. So what does a feminine posture look like? Uh, it's a little hard to see my feet, but I think you can do it. So for a feminine posture, it's important to have our feet nice and rooted into the ground. So I'm checking out my toes and I'm checking out my heels. Rock back and forth a little bit, rock side to side a little bit. Finding a nice, deep, rooted quality in all the four corners of your feet, as well as the midpoint of the bottom of your foot. So we're not having a flat foot because after we do that, we're going to lift through our inner legs up into our pelvis like we're drawing upward. And this is going to naturally, um, excuse me, this will naturally motivate our pelvic energy to lift upward as well, which is going to help activate our core energy. So we're rooted through our feet, lifting upward through our inner thighs, engaging slightly in the low belly. So I'm not holding it super tight in. It does, we have beautiful curvy bellies and it's, it's super important to let them be open and, and fluid. So as we exhale, we'll draw them in. And as we inhale, we'll let them go out a little bit. However, when we're doing that, it's not only just the front of the body that we are drawing in, we're drawing in the sides and the back as well. So it's a lifting and drawing inward energy all the way through our inner legs, up through our pelvis, through our belly, and eventually incorporating our lungs as well. So it's similar to the idea of being breathed, right? As we're breathing, we're also being breathed in our body. So we find the four corners of our feet, we're lifting up, we're inhaling, let our belly expand outward and our pelvic floor drop down, opening up our lungs, front, sides, and back, finally filling into the top of our lungs. And then as we exhale, we're drawing everything in and up, activating that core energy. So it can circulate throughout our body and bring us a sense of empowerment, a sense of ease, and a sense of fluidity in our body. So from this space with our feet rooted and we're following our breath, allowing our core energy to build and flow, we can actually very easily start moving. And notice how this feels to you. Does it feel stiff? Does it feel awkward? So just moving fluidly from this space can be really powerful. Move our hips side to side. Now, as we're moving, we're also paying attention to 
uh, our stiffness to any limitations in our movement to our range of motion. So our range of motion is going to be um, limited by our joints. So if we have healthy joints that can move in a good range of motion, then we'll be able to move fluidly. Uh, it will also be affected by the quality of our muscle tissue and our connective tissue, our fascia. So if we have tight fascia, if we have chronically tight muscles, it won't be easy to move in these very fluid ways. So one of our main goals is going to be to learn to move fluidly in our bodies so that uh, as we move fluidly, we can have good circulation through those areas. Because when we move fluidly, it's a sign that our muscles can contract and relax, right? Contracting and relaxing. Same as when we breathed. So we breathed in, all the muscles in the front are just kind of relaxing, and our pelvic floor is relaxing. And as we exhale, they're contracting. So it's this rhythmic pulsing of contraction and relaxation that allows for the fluidity in our bodies. So often as women, we're stuck in a state of feeling frozen, where we are stuck, uh, many muscles are stuck in, and possibly even our organs are stuck in, a state of contraction. Our muscular organs, that is, like our heart. So when we are unable to move fluidly, or we're having some sort of dysfunction internally, it's really important to look at the state of tension versus relaxation. And this as well goes for our pelvic temple. If the muscles in our pelvic temple are stuck in a contracted state and we can't release them, we won't be able to experience that beauty of contraction and relaxation that builds up our orgasmic potential and can lead to an orgasmic release. So all of this work we're doing around fluidity has a lot of effects throughout the body. So right now I'm just doing some gentle hip circles. These are big, right? Well, it's the medium. Big would look something like this, right? So we're doing some medium hip circles. Do some small hip circles. For small hip circles, your feet are closer together and you're just staying within internally of this range between your shoulders. For medium hip circles, we're going slightly outside of our shoulder width. And for big hip circles, we're going way outside. Now, I don't recommend doing big hip circles at first. Medium hip circles are good to start. Just kind of a nice general warm up. Make sure you do both sides. And then once your hips feel a little bit looser, actually, let's do some hip pushes first. So I am bending the opposite knee, putting my weight kind of evenly balanced. I'm um, using the ball of my foot to rest on, but so evenly balance between both feet. Rest your hands on your thigh and press your hip out to the other side. So we're gonna get a stretch through this tensor fascia latte muscle and the gluteus minimus, as well as a little bit in the gluteus maximus. So it's really important to stretch out the side of our hip, especially as we age, because tension in this area can lead to our hip joint being misaligned, which can lead to an increased risk for hip replacement, surgery, um, for difficulty being able to walk um, or move joyfully, um, as well as experiencing pleasure. So if these are tight, we're not gonna be able to move in the ways that we need to build up our orgasmic potential and achieve a powerful orgasmic relief. So pushing to one side, let's do the other side. You can hold this position for as long as it feels good. Do it repeatedly throughout the day if it helps. I tend to do this one quite a bit, especially when I'm on my feet a lot. Feels awesome, so good. You do some wiggling, you do some hip circles. I love doing hip circles. So let's just go right into that. So again, we're going to put uh, our weight on the ball of our foot. Let's start with the right side. And so weight on the ball of the right foot evenly between both feet. Um, and we're going to, oops, sorry. <laughs> so on the ball of the right foot, we're gonna lift that right hip forward, up and back and down. So we're just doing a nice gentle hip circle. And I have my hand on my hip to support a nice fluid movement. So one of the things that we can think about while we're working with this very focused range of motion is how does it feel? Does it feel sticky? Does it skip 
or click. Go the other way. So in any of these movements, if you feel a stickiness or a skipping or a clicking, that's a sign that you need to smooth that out. So to do that, we'll use a process called neuromuscular uh, reset. Excuse me, neuromuscular reset is um, just a process of moving as fluidly you can through a range of motion. And then when you find a sticky clicking or skipping spot, you just wiggle back and forth. So oftentimes we'll feel it at the top of our hip range of motion with these circles. So we're just moving back and forth. And what this does is start to rhythmically contract and release the muscles that assist with this range of motion, or if they're stuck in a contraction that cause that dysfunctional range of motion. So a big one is this muscle back here, the quadratus lumborum or the QL. And when it is tight and stuck, um, then it won't allow us to move through that top range of motion with ease. So as we lift, we're contracting, we're drawing the hip, the top of the hip and the bottom of the ribs together. And that's activating that muscle. And then as we lower back down, that muscle is releasing. Then as we draw forward, we're contracting the muscle in the front, which is the TFL, which we stretched out just a little bit ago, and then even the psoas for stability. We're also engaging our core, our girdle, and our core inward. So to allow our hip a freedom of range of motion, we need to increase the contraction, a gentle contraction, throughout our middle. When we hold it in that state, then our hip can move really fluidly. But if our belly's loose and we're just kind of hunched over, we're not really going to be able to get the contraction that we need from these muscles that move our joint through its range of motion. If you have a hard time um, contracting and releasing any of these muscles, it's a sign that you need to do some, some really deep self-care on that area using cupping, acupressure, self-massage, or the um, positional release anti-yoga or deep unwinding tools that are in our other videos. So just notice how you're doing. Notice if your muscles can contract and release with ease. How big and how fluid can you make your hip circle? How small and tight can you make your hip circle? The small and tight movements actually require a lot more control than just kind of throwing our hip around, right? So when we want to do it really smoothly and fluidly in a really small space, we really need to focus on engaging our girdle and drawing upward through that core that we were talking about earlier. So making sure you go both ways, do a little bit big and a little bit small. So this is just an introduction to some of these practices. In future videos, we'll put them all together in a uh, simply choreographed routine. We don't need to be a belly dance artist or any sort of dance professional to do it, um, but it's good to have the basics first. So do the, doing the other side, focusing on that hip, lifting up onto the ball of the left foot, moving through your joint range of motion while we engage the girdle, lift up through our core, and allow the muscles to contract and release as we move through. The stronger the contraction and the stronger the release, the stronger the movement, we can actually start moving into a pleasure pulsing practice. And with pleasure pulsing, when we contract and release our muscles or a specific muscle repeatedly, it actually starts to build up an orgasmic charge. So to be able to do that though, you really have to be able to release fully. So if you have any difficulties with that, do your self care work first um, and then come back to it. I'll have a whole class on pleasure pulsing. But the reason I bring it up is because the quadratus lumborum is one area where we can really initiate an orgasmic charge, build up our orgasmic potential, and then release an orgasmic cascade down into our pelvis to activate our pelvic temple and create an even more charged um, orgasmic potential within our pelvis. So it's a really powerful practice just doing even these simple hip circles back and forward, noticing the skips, sticky spots, or clicking, and then trying some smaller ones. Remember, the smaller ones, we really need to engage 
our girdle, which is the sides of our body, as well as our core, which is our inner drawing and lifting energy. If you have difficulty with that core energy, lifting and drawing energy, then it is likely that you need some more specific support. So if that's the case, um, and you haven't worked on it with me yet, go ahead and let me know and we'll get you started. So we've done some hip work. We did some pressing side to side. We did some lovely luscious hip circles, both with both hips as well as with one hip. We talked about pleasure pulsing and orgasmic potential as well as our girdle, which is drawing our side muscles in because so often as we age, they tend to just expand outward and our core energy tends to sink. So we just kind of shorten and spread outward, that middle age spread, but we can combat that by rooting into the ground, drawing up through our inner legs, drawing our core energy up and inward and drawing our girdle inward at the same time so that we can get the fluidity of movement that we need throughout the rest of our body. If you have any questions, let me know. I will have a lot more videos sharing all of these different yummy, pleasurable, joyful movement practices with you soon. And we'll get you to the next level of health, joy, and pleasure.